much of the work that has been done uh, to put together the, the narratives that you hear has been based on the materials that are available and the things that may have happened in, in Walton and other places. And um, uh, I'm well known for being uh, somebody who is free with his opinions. And uh, if I may express some of these three opinions, uh, I do sometimes feel that that dependence on, on artifacts and, and uh, occurrences that have happened in, say, Bolton or in the local area, sometimes gives uh, a false impression of the way in which uh, slavery was overcome. Because one of my contentions is that it was actually uh, much to do with the slave re rebellions that uh, made uh, maintaining slavery increasingly difficult. Uh, and it was also to do with the economic uh, interests of, of, of England, which, which uh, were running counter to the continuance of, of slavery. So those are the two kind of aspects of, of slavery, that, uh, or, or the, the battle against slavery, or the cause for its demise, that perhaps don't feature in these uh, gatherings that much, because uh, it's hard to find artifacts or uh, objects or ways of connecting those points. However, we the poets, we're never stuck for a way of coming at something. And uh, so I took it upon myself <laughs> to uh, write a piece uh, which uh, attempts to, to show uh, uh, just how sometimes the slaves actually combined to fight the slave masters, certainly in the plantations. And this is based on uh, some research that I was doing in, in almost close to Scotland, in Whitehaven, which is one of the ports they imported rum. Uh, uh, and they made a lot of money uh, out of rum uh, and Whitehaven, which obviously is connected to sugar. Uh, so um, this is a, um, a kind of story of a, of, of a slave rebellion in which they're deciding in which way they're going to fight. Um, it's, it's poetry, so uh, it's condensed. Uh, in, in, um, and uh, I'll do this poem. I'll do one poem for the younger ones, okay? All right. And then we'll... I will then be instructed by a power higher than myself as to what will happen next. Okay. Right, so <laughs> this poem is called Oblivion. And uh, you've got to imagine darkness, um, slaves, and slave Africans gathering, and a spirit of trouble, rebellion in the air. It was something like this. First time I've ever performed it. There are many paths to the land of our ancestors. Some choose the path of earth, some choose the path of water, some choose the path of fire. We of mortal flesh await your signs, your message. When the drum beats, when the drum mashes the air, when the drum pounds the heat, when the drum cries, then and only then will the Orisha descend and dance the dance of oblivion. Some tell the path of earth, some tell the path of water, some tell the path of fire. Do you smell the cane burning? Do you smell the whips burning? Do you smell the irons of chains melting in the heat? It is the path of fire! Thank you. <laughs> um, sometimes it, some of the rebellions would, would, would be uh, uh, a matter of the sites just getting fire and burning down some of the buildings on the, the actual sugarcane fields, things like that. Um, the, um, the last poem I'm going to do at this point is uh, uh, a poem that is very 21st century perhaps. Uh, uh, another of my contentious opinions is that um, the effects, the legacy of slavery lives today in that in order to maintain slavery, uh, I believe that the, uh, the, the, the the, the enslavers created this ideology called racism, which talked about how black people were savages, were lesser human beings, or maybe not human beings at all, and that was why they could be treated so badly. They were like beasts of burden. Um, and that, that mythology, that psychology, I believe still exists today. Black people are still treated badly uh, uh, and seem to be less than a white person. Uh, now, uh, that has, uh, obviously, uh, that, that might be something that goes on in, in white people's minds. Sometimes we internalize that and we start thinking that, yeah, you know, we, maybe we are less. And so one of the sort of black consciousness movement uh, 
uh, strands was to uh, think positively about ourselves, celebrate ourselves, and celebrate the Africanness of us. Um, so that's a long introduction to my <laughs> very short poem, which is about my locks, my hair, uh, because um, I had these locks five, six, seven years, whatever. And uh, sometimes when I walk across uh, the black areas, uh, like uh, Moss Side, uh, Princess Road, I see the barbers all looking at me, <laughs> keen to make a dollar, <laughs> but like, no chance. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> this is my poem for them, uh, or to my locks actually, my locks. You kept the wind from my head, you made me feel dread. I never needed a pillow, I could always rely upon you. Looking through my dreads often improved the view. It's a dream. Now you've been shorn, I feel I've died and not been reborn. The barber keeps looking at me, winking. I know what he's thinking. But he'll never get that trimmer near me, no way. I'm twisting up my hair again, and this time my locks will stay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much.